And let me try and let me try and like motivate the idea here. Look at this equation. Okay, look at that equation. Could you solve that for z? Could you get z by itself on one side of the equation here? Where this over here just has x's and y's. Would it be easy for you to do? No. Hell no, that would be pretty tough, right? It would be really hard for us, algebraically, to solve for z. Just like in Cal 1, if we had an equation that was hard to solve for y, we would use implicit differentiation, right? So what we're saying to ourselves is this. Look, that can probably be written as z is a function of x and y, but I don't know how to get it to look like that, right? I don't know how to do it. But I know that z should be some function of x and y because if you, look, if I give you x and I give you y, can you solve for z? If I give you x and y, can you solve for z? Yes. So we know z does, does depend on x and y. So we know that these two derivatives are possible. What are they? Well, you can't solve for z, so you can't do it. Do you see that? You can't do it. However, if we take this and we just move every, like, like if we were to move this to the other side, wouldn't we have some function over here with x, y, and z equals zero? And that's why we just went through that whole thing. Let's just move the one to the other side. Let's make that a minus equals zero. Then this whole side is what? Capital F. And now if I want to know the partial of z with respect to x, I'm just going to use this formula right here. So the partial of z with respect to x will be negative Okay, help me out here. I want the partial of this capital F with respect to x. That means you're holding what variable or variables constant? You're holding y and z constant. So 3x squared, derivative of that? Derivative of that? Okay, and then here we're holding y and z constant. And then derivative of x is 1, so 6yz. So tell me again, 3x squared plus 6yz. That is, that is this right here. That is the derivative of capital F with respect to x holding y and z constant. Any questions on that? Over what? The partial of that same capital F, this time with, res with respect to z. So hold x and y constant. Derivative of that, derivative of that, derivative of that, 3z squared plus 6, we're holding, we're doing this one, so 6xy, oops, 6xy, there it is. So in order for you to, to know this partial, right, partial z with respect to x, <coughs> what do you have to know? The x, the y, and the z. So you actually would have to know, you would have to know the triple, the order triple x, y, and z that satisfies that equation. And then you could find that partial. And then similarly, you could find this one, right? The difference between this one is, the only difference between this one is the numerator is now with respect to y, not x. The denominator would be the same, right? Let's do it. So the denominator would be the same. There's a negative out front. 3z squared plus 6xy. That's the same, right? That's the same as that. It's just the top. So the derivative of this with respect to y now is 3y squared plus 6xz. All right, now you should be able to do number four. Yep. Right? All you got to do is, is get your capital F. Remember, though, to get capital F, you have to do what? Move everything to one side. And then go ahead and do your derivative. And I don't expect you to clean up the answer. Just give me this answer, box it up, you're done. All right? Just the derivative is going to be a little more involved. All right, let's see where we are here. I believe that is the end of chain rule. 
Yeah, that's the end of chain rule. All right, we still have 25 minutes. Do you have a question? Oh. oh. Eleven three. I can get rid of that. Eleven four. I can get rid of that. Eleven five. We just did. Eleven six. Partial fractions. I don't need that. All right. Eleven point six. Now it says on this, on the take home, it says to use everything through 11.6, but there are no questions over 11.6. So like 11.6 does not pertain to this at all. All right, we are gonna talk now about the directional derivative and the gradient vector. So last class, we were talking about partial derivatives and I wanna break out my, my uh, x, y, z, three-dimensional space again. What we were saying last time is that if you have a function of x and y, it draws a surface, right? z equals f of x, y draws a surface. And <clears throat> if we have some surface sitting here, right, and we want to know what does the partial of f with respect to x mean, it means that if we go out to some point, x, y, and go up to the surface we're standing here, we're going to hold, if we're doing partial with respect to x, we're holding what variable constant? Y. We're holding y constant. So in this, wait a minute, how did my red get, oops. There we go. I was breaking the right hand rule there, I think. Okay, now, we got x, y, right, come up, we're here. If we hold y constant, this is y, if we hold y constant, we're cutting through the surface with a plane, and we can imagine a curve like this, and we're trying to find at that point what the slope of the tangent line is, right? And then we said if you do the partial with respect to y, it's the opposite. You're holding x constant, slicing through this way, and you have a curve that goes this way, right? And we have a different slope. But I told you last class that we just choose to start talking about this by cutting through with the plane this way. Oh or a plane the other way, right? But there's nothing stopping us from cutting through a plane that comes in like more at an angle, right? And then if we do that, we're still gonna get a curve and we should talk about a, be able to talk about a tangent line. That's what this is. The directional derivative allows us to now get a more general answer, right? So here's the picture of it. Let me go off. I'm gonna go over here, sit down so I can. So this is, this is what you've already seen. There's our red axis is the x-axis, the y-axis is the green. And so if we hold y to be constant, we'll be slicing through with the plane, and we have that curve right there. That blue, that blue line, that's the partial with respect to what? That blue line right there. Partial with respect to what? Partial with respect to x. With respect to x, because I'm holding y constant, right? Let me... Uh, can I not move my Y? Oh, I can move my whole point. Move it like this. There we go. Moved it. I moved my Y a little bit. You see that? I moved the Y a little bit, so I have a different curve. So that's a partial with respect to X. Now let's change it. Make this a little bit smaller. You mind hitting the light again for me? Thank you. Okay, that's partial with respect to x. See, I want to move my point a little bit. Oh, I liked it right there. Okay, there we go. That's still partial with respect to x. Now, I'm going to change it. I'm going to do partial with respect to y. Boom. Oh, shit, went too far. There we go. That's the partial with respect to y now, right? I'm holding the x constant this time. 
And when I do that, I have a different, a different slice. But what we want to do is, is to be able to take that plane and have it in any direction. I'm trying to get that damn thing to show up here. There it is. We want to be able to rotate that plane kind of any direction we want, right? So if I say, let's go right there. Right now, what are we holding constant, <laughs> right? You can't say I'm holding X or Y constant. So how do we figure that out? I mean, obviously, geometrically, there is a slope of a tangent line through that point going through that curve, right? But how do we find it? So what we do is this. We look at, imagine from the top view of this slice, all right? Do you see from the top view, looking straight down from above, that the, that the plane that I'm slicing through with kind of creates an angle. And if I, if I take that angle and I kind of look at it like a vector and move it here, that vector has a direction, doesn't it? And that kind of tells me where to point. It's kind of like if I'm going here and let's say I walk out and I'm standing on the surface, then you just need to tell me which way to point, right? Okay, point there. Point that way and just take a step, right? That's the slope of your tangent line. That direction I'm going in, I can always look at it as a vector just sitting here on the ground pointing me in the right direction, right? So if I point this way, right, the vector will point in the same direction as I'm pointing. Like if I move, if I'm pointing like this and I move myself to the origin, right, that vector points the same direction. It's obvious, but I just want to make sure you understand. All right, so if that's, if that's what we're trying to achieve, how do we do it? Well, it's a really simple formula for it. All right, here it is. This is it. It's new notation, all right? The new notation is this. So if you have a, if you have a, uh, a surface, right? There's your surface. Then F it has what we call a directional derivative in the direction of the unit vector u is equal to the vector a, b. So remember how I just said that there's a vector on the ground here that tells me which way to point? That vector is the vector a, b. And it must be a unit vector. If that unit vector points us in the direction, then the directional derivative we write like this. Capital D subscript u. That means like the derivative in the direction of u of the function or of the, on the surface f, f of x, y equals <coughs> a, which is the first component of the um, unit vector, times the partial of f with respect to x at the point x, y, plus b times the partial of f with respect to y at the point x, y. There it is. That's your formula. Now, I don't know if you believe this formula, I'm just giving it to you. But let's see if it makes any sense at all, all right? So let's go back to what I first told you, partial derivatives, right? So the partial with respect to x, what are we, if we go partial with respect to x, what are we holding constant? Y. y. So we're like this, slicing this way. Can somebody give me <coughs> a unit vector that points in this direction? Look at my axes. I need to point this direction. You're close. You said 0, 1. That's this. It's this way. 1, 0. And it's two-dimensional. We're only looking at the direction on the ground. So do you all agree if I slice, if I do the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to x, what I'm really doing is this problem with my u being, my unit vector being what vector did you just say? 1, 0. And what is that according to this formula? If a is 1 and b is 0, then what does the formula give you? partial with respect to x, right? The partial with respect to x. So the partial with respect to x is this problem done when the unit vector is this. What about the partial with respect to y? So now we slice here like this, right? So what's the direction of this vector? Well, remember, we have to be facing this way, right? Because positive direction is this way. So what's this direction if we slice here? What's that unit vector on the ground? Zero, one. What would happen if you use 0, 1? 0, 1, you get 
partial, this goes away and you get that, right? Partial with respect to y. So the formula makes sense, right? Partial with respect to x, the formula works. Partial with respect to y, <coughs> formula works. Any other direction is just some linear combination of those two. That's all it is. And that should make sense to you, that it's just <coughs> some sort of combination of the two other vectors together. All right. <coughs> what the hell? All right, let's do, a, let's do an example. I give you a surface, yeah? Sitting there, three-dimensional space, the surface. I want to find the directional derivative at the point one, two. So if we go out one, over two, go up to the surface, right? I have a point. Sitting there on that point on that surface. I want to find the directional derivative if I'm sitting at that point on the surface, and I want to be pointing in a direction it's making an angle of pi over 6 with the x-axis. So maybe I should bring this back. I'm really hoping you all see all of this. You have a surface here, right? You go out, x is 1, y is 2. You're somewhere on the surface. And I want to know the directional derivative here. And the direction I want you to point is this thing. Like, what direction do I point in? the same direction as making an angle of pi over 6 with the x-axis. So whatever that direction is, right, whatever that direction is, is the direction you need to be pointing in up here. And then just walk out that direction, tell me if you're going up or down, what's that rate of change? All right? <clears throat> All right, so we know already that the directional derivative in the direction of u of the surface is equal to a times the partial of f with respect to x at that point x, y, plus b times the partial of f with respect to y at that point x, y. That's the formula, right? And so what we need to figure out here is, well, we need to know the partials of f with respect to x and y. We need to know those partials, right? And we need to know what the vector is. So let's start with the vector. Let's try and get u. How are we going to get it? I'm going to go and look from the top down, right? Or I'm looking down. And do you all see the vector down here, that my direction vector? It makes an angle of pi over 6, right? So I'm going to draw that here. There it is. So is it any vector that makes an angle of pi over 6? Yes. Any no, vector? No, 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 no. no. What does it have to be? It has to be, in the formula, it has to be a what? It has to be a unit vector, which means it has to be a length of 1 for this formula to work. So look, pi over 6 should ring a bell, right? That's a common angle on a unit circle. So if I'd imagine a unit circle going through here, right, of length 1, right, unit, unit circle, we know what that is? What's, the, what's that as a point? Root 3 over 2, 1 half. So I'm just going to make it a vector. Root 3 over 2, 1 half. Do you all agree that that vector would be making an angle of pi over 6 with the x-axis? And it's a unit vector. I know it's a unit vector because it lives on the unit circle. OK. So I have u. Okay, I need some partials. So I'm not ready for this yet. I'm just doing some scratch work. What's the partial of f with respect to x? 3x squared minus 3y. That's it, right? That's partial of f with respect to x. It's treating y like a constant. And now the partial of f with respect to y. Minus 3x plus 8y. So 
So this was all just like, this was me getting my vector u, this was me getting my partials, right? And now I'm ready for the directional derivative. So time for this. The derivative in the direction of u of this function at the point, okay, do I know the x and y I'm talking about here? One, two, one, two is equal to, okay, a. What's a? Root three over two times this right here, the partial of f with respect to x at one, two, right? I need to calculate that. Plus b, which is a half, and then times the partial of f with respect to y at the point one, two. Which is root three over two. Okay, what happens when I plug one, two into this? You get negative three plus one half. Okay, now when you plug in one, two into this, 13? 16 minus three, right? 13, plug one, plug two, 13. So you get negative three root three over two plus 13 over two. I'm thinking that that's a positive number. What do y'all think? I mean, sure, we could figure it out, right? This is the same as 13 minus 3 root 3 over 2, because they have the same denominator. And we could do that on a calculator and get the answer, right? Yeah, just leave it like this, though. <clears throat> this is fine. Although I do kind of want to know, remember, it's like we walked out, we were sitting here, we walked out 1, we went over 2, went up into the surface, I'm standing there, right? I make an angle of pi over six with the x-axis, and I take a step, am I going up or down? Up because this is positive, right? Okay, so that I kind of do want to know, right? Like, I don't need, on a test, that's a good answer, but I'm just saying like, we really would like to know if we're going up or down, right? Like what that rate of change is. <clears throat> Understand? Okay. Let's see what the next example says. Yeah, let's do this one. This should, timing should work out on this pretty, pretty nice. On that, in the problem before, I gave you the point on the surface, right? I gave you the, I gave you the surface, the function. Then I gave you the point on the surface. And then I told you the angle, right, that I wanted to rotate and go walk that direction. Now I'm giving you the actual vector, right? Which you initially are like, well, this problem's easier, isn't it? Because I already gave you what u is. But I'm, trick I'm trying to trick you. Because I gave you a vector u, I even called it u, but what's wrong with u? It's not a unit vector. How do you know that's not a unit vector? That the length of it's not one? We'll just take the length of it, right? What's the magnitude of u right now? Yeah, it's, right, this whole thing? Root five, that's not one, right? But could we find a vector that is pointed in the same direction as that that has the length, unit length? Yeah, just divide each of those components by root five and then you have a unit vector. Right? So I tried tricking you, right? Ha ha, real funny. I didn't get you. So you're going to say this. We're going to find the directional vector in the direction of v. And v is going to be that vector converted over to a unit vector. And that will be whatever a is times partial of f with respect to x uh, at the point x, y plus b partial f with respect to y at x, y. So what is v? v is negative 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5. So it's a, simple, it's a simple fix, right, to find a unit vector in the same direction. It's a simple fix, but you can't forget it because if you forget that, your, your derivative, your slope of your tangent line is going to be off by an entire factor of, well, in this case, root 5. So you might think that this slope is much greater than it actually is.
All right. What else do I need? Some partials? Uh, let me try the partials right here. I think, I think I can squeeze them in. Partial of f with respect to x. What's the derivative of natural log of anything? One over, one over that thing. Okay. Times the derivative of what's inside of it, and we're differentiating with respect to x. So what do we get? 2x. 2x and I can just put that on top, can I? And then with respect to y, it's uh, pretty much the same thing with 2y on top, right? All right, pretty easy partials. So now I'm ready. The directional derivative in the direction v, which is a unit vector, right, of f at the point 2, 1 is a, which for us is negative 1 over root 5, times the partial of f with respect to x at, one, at 2, 1, not 1, 2, at 2, 1, plus b, b was 2 over root 5, partial f with respect to y at 2, 1 as well. And then you just got to plug those values in. Let's go ahead and crank out the final result here. Negative 1 over root 5. Okay. You got 4 on top. On the bottom you got 5. And then over here, plus 2 over root 5. And then 1 over... Oh, two, it's 2 again, yeah. Uh, no, wait, hold on. Maybe two, two, over two, over five. Five. Yeah, 2 over 5. Yeah, 2 over 5. Those have the same denominator, right? Oh, wait, hold on. Hey. <coughs> Isn't it 0? Yeah. It's 0. So does that mean we're standing at the top, like we're at the top of a hill? Not necessarily. We could be, we could be at a top of a hill. We could also be in like that thing where I told you like the saddle, where maybe in one direction you go up, the other direction down. But in this particular direction, if I take a little infinitesimal step, I don't have any vertical mo motion, right? It's just flat in that direction. All right, we, we have four minutes. I have a question for you just to think about. Do you think it should be easy? Do you think that this is, would, would be an easy thing for us to answer? Let's say I give you a surface, okay? Let's just take this surface. And let's say I give you the point, 2, 1. Okay, so there's your surface. Okay, you're standing on that point. If you go down to the ground, right? On the ground, that's the point, 2, 1. Right, that's the, ground, that's the point on the ground. And you're standing here. Do you think it's going to be easy, moderately difficult, or extremely difficult for us to just calculate somehow the direction you should point in now to get the steepest rate of change? So if I give you a surface, and I give you a point, and I go, hey, go stand on that point, do you think it's going to be easy or hard for us to figure out the direction you should point in to have the steepest ascent? Like generally speaking, do you think that's going to be hard or easy? How many different directions are there to point? Infinitely many, right? So how are you going to check each one, right, and figure out which direction gives you the steepest descent, right? Well, maybe, but do you think it's easy or hard? I mean, do you think that it's... What's your gut? I mean, what's your gut telling you? Hard, right? Hard? Or you say easy because I wouldn't be asking if it wasn't. It, I mean, really, I mean, you're standing there. It's like, how do you figure out if all you know is the, if all I know is the function and the point, right? That's all I know is I'm standing on a surface. I know the function. I know the point. It seems like it might be really hard to figure out what direction I should point in to get the steepest descent, right? And it turns out that it's so easy that it, it's crazy, that it should be this easy, all right? And it comes down to next class. <laughs> we will talk about it next class. But it's very simple. All we need to do is calculate something called the gradient vector. And once we have the gradient vector, it tells us the direction of pointing. So it's very simple to do. All right.
Work on that mini exam. Work on your homework. We're through 7.5, so you know if you're working off the schedule doing your homework as you are supposed to be, then 11.5 is what we're through at this point. You all have a great rest of your day.